Hello, welcome back to Retro Break. I'm so glad that you guys really enjoyed last week's Top 15 Wii Games episode, because this week I've got 15 amazing hidden gems for the system. And this list, this set of games here, has been so difficult for me to try and come up with, but I think I've picked 15 really good and really interesting games, so I can't wait to get into it. And of course, this video is sponsored by Bifrost Bridge Studios. They've just sent me over the latest screenshots from their Metroid comic, so take a look at these, see what you think. If you want to get this for yourself, go and check out the links in the description. Now, on with the video. So the first game I've got on my list, and one that a lot of other people also wanted to include, so I'm very happy to say that the first game is Muramasa the Demon Blade, an absolute classic by Vanillaware, the same company that made amazing games like Princess Crown and Odin Sphere. This game, I got it when it came out and I fell in love with it. The graphics are absolutely outstanding, as you would expect from Vanillaware, it looks incredible. It also has a really nice combat system, it's really intuitive and it's really fun to play. Great platforming as well, it's just an all round fantastic game. So if you like adventure games, if you like 2D beat em up platformers, you'll be right at home with this. Highly, highly recommended. And I also recommend all of the other Vanillaware games as well. And I really need to get round to playing their new game, 13 Sentinels, soon, because that looks amazing as well. Now, the next game we have on our list, this one comes from Konami, and this is called Dewey's Adventure. This is a really cute 3D platformer with a really unique control system and a really unique gameplay feature. Basically, you play as Dewey, the main character here, and you roll around the levels by tilting the wheel remote and you can either raise or lower the temperature and that changes his form so you can either become a cloud which shoots lightning you can be the blob of water that rolls around or you can become a block of ice that can freeze lakes and you can use that to attack the enemies it's a really interesting really unique game and it's got lovely graphics and lovely music as well so i highly recommend dewey's adventure if you've played all of the nintendo platformers and you want something just cute and colorful and fun you really can't go far wrong with this one. Konami as well was a fantastic publisher and developer for the Wii. And I've got a few more Konami games that I'm going to get to in a little bit. Now this next one is from Deep Silver and this is another really interesting game but the complete opposite of Dewey's Adventure. This one is Cursed Mountain. And basically this game is a third person horror adventure game. It has tons of atmosphere. I really loved it at the time. It's just layers on layers of mysteries as you're walking around this mountain and you're having flashbacks to see how all these bodies ended up here and the sort of cults that they were in and stuff. So if you enjoy that sort of mystery style adventure, it's a really good game, it's really interesting, and I don't think it's that expensive either. And it's not the kind of game that you see very often on Nintendo consoles in general, so it's quite interesting from that point of view as well. Another game from Konami, I told you they've made some really great games for the Wii. This one is Tornado Outbreak. And this one is kind of a ripoff of Katamari Damacy, but because Katamari never came out on a Nintendo console, this is kind of the best we got. I think it also came out on the DS as well, although I don't actually own that version, but this version here on the Wii looks and plays really good. It's a really fun game. You basically start off as a tiny little tornado, and just like Katamari, you go around the levels picking up bigger and bigger things until you've finally expanded big enough to pick up everything in the stage and then the level finishes and all of the levels have different themes it's all cute and colorful and it's quite funny as well so if you enjoy nice simple games and you want something just to play for a few hours and you've got a wii and you would like something like katamari highly recommend tornado outbreak now another really unique game for the system this one is called deadly creatures and this one actually won quite a few awards back in the day. Number one for having amazing graphics on the Wii. This game honestly looks like it could have been an early PS3 or 360 game. It really is stunning for the system. I also love the sense of scale because in this game you're playing as all of the insects as you're going around the underworld. But you actually see the story playing out from the people's point of view. So you see them sort of walking in the distance and you can hear them talking as you're crawling around and fighting all of these other insects. It's a really unique game. It's not the most involved gameplay wise, but I think just for the premise alone, it's worth checking out if you've got a Wii and you want to try out one of the more unique games for the system. 
Now this next one is Sean White Snowboarding that comes to us from Ubisoft. Some of you may be familiar with this game from the awful E3 presentation of 2008 I think in which Cammy Dunaway introduced Sean White on the balance board on stage. Luckily, although that presentation was a huge cringe fest, the actual game turned out to be really good, and I don't hear enough people talking about it. So I'm here today to say, if you want a good snowboarding game for the Wii, don't go for SSX Blur, which is the obvious choice. Go for Sean White Snowboarding instead. It's a really, really good game, especially if you're using the balance board, which is what I used to play the game with back in the day. Unfortunately, I couldn't find my balance board here to record footage for the video, and this was actually the first time that I played it using the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, and it does actually control really well with them as well. So if you want a really good snowboarding game for the Wii, definitely recommend Sean White. And there was also... There it is, and there was also a sequel, a follow-up to this game as well, called World Tour, as well as Road Trip, so they're both really good games. They're both pretty much more of the same, obviously this one goes around the whole world, where this, whereas this one is just set on one mountain, but even so, both of these games are really good. Highly recommend them if you're into your snowboarding games and you want something a little bit different. And now we're back to Konami for the next one. I told you they were on fire with the Wii back in the day. This one was either a launch game or it came out very close to launch. This one is called LEDs, and this is a really fun game. Just like the Tornado game, I feel like they took a lot of inspiration from Katamari, but the difference being with this one, you actually use a sort of light gun. You start off only being able to pick up really small and light objects, and by the end of the stage, once you've found enough of these LED creatures, you can power up the strength of your beam, and you can even pick up like houses, whole rooms and just swing them around, cause loads of destruction in order to find these little LEDs that are hidden around. And the more of these LEDs that you find within the levels, the more things that you can interact with and the more areas that you can open up. At the time as well, I was also blown away by the graphics in this game. It looks really good, especially for such an early release for the system. And there's also a follow-up to this game on the DS, which I haven't played yet, but I think that one's more of an adventure game, whereas this one is more of a first-person I wouldn't really call it a first person shooter, more of like a first person mess your room up simulator. It's really really fun, highly recommend it. And this next one comes from Hudson, who were also really big supporters of the Wii, just like Konami. This one is called A Shadow's Tale, and the main reason that I picked this game is its incredible art style and its incredible atmosphere. The game itself is really basic, it's just a simple puzzle platformer, but the way the game is presented with this gorgeous, hand-painted almost kind of background, and the fact that you play as a shadow in the background of all the scenes, and you can interact with real objects in the foreground, and you can sort of turn them around and depending on the shadows you can sort of jump on them and you can trigger switches and stuff it's just a really really clever game and it's really well presented it's not really anything that you've never played before but the way that it was put together really does deserve to be seen by more people and plus the fact that this was one of the last games that Hudson ever made I think it was a really good send-off for the company as well it's such a shame they're no longer around now this next one I've talked about on the channel in the past and if you want to see me go into more detail about this game, Ivy the Kiwi, go and check the description below because I'll put a link to the episode where I discussed the gameplay mechanics of this game. So Ivy the Kiwi, like it says right there on the front cover, was made by the creator of Sonic, Yuji Naka, after he left Sonic Team and went to found his own game company called Prope. And this is definitely the best game that he made while he was with his other company. It's a really fun puzzle platformer. And you basically use the Wii Remote to draw vines in order to guide this Kiwi to the end of the stages. And the stages, of course, get progressively more difficult and complicated as the game goes on. And it introduces a few new mechanics throughout the game. And this game also had a port on the DS, although once again I haven't played the DS version. But I really enjoy it on the Wii. And if the DS one is anywhere near as good as this, it's definitely worth getting as well. So that's why you should go and check out Ivy the Kiwi. Definitely one of Yuji Naka's best games that he's ever made. Unlike a certain recent game that's just came out. Now this next one, some of you may have guessed what it is just from looking at the cover. Of course, this is Pandora's Tower. And I had to include this one because I included Last Story and Xenoblade at the end of last week's episode. And this is basically the third game of that trilogy. And I feel like this is the one that's definitely discussed the least out of the three. So I had to include it in my Hidden Gems episode. 
basically the game is kind of a Zelda dungeon style game mixed with the combat of the old God of War series. I guess that's the best way of describing it. It's got a really interesting premise. It's got really amazing graphics. Basically you're going through these different dungeons in order to kill monsters and then you take their hearts back to this girl here who's got a curse put on her and she has to eat the hearts else she turns into a monster herself and there's sort of a time limit with that as well. It's a really interesting game, it's got really interesting mechanics, great dungeon designs and of course it had this really nice special edition that it came with as well back in the day and I really feel like this game deserves more attention than it gets. I would love to see it get remade for more modern systems because this came out right at the end of the Wii's life as well so I feel like it didn't really get the attention that it deserved even back then when it came out. Now it took me quite a while to decide whether to include this game or not because of course it's part of a really famous game series. I'm talking about Need for Speed Nitro but the reason I included this one is because this is a completely exclusive and built from the ground up Need for Speed game for the Wii. And compared to the Need for Speed games that came out on the Wii before this one, things like Need for Speed Carbon and Pro Street, they were all really serious racing games, whereas this one is completely arcadey. And I really love the fact that they went all out with the arcade aesthetic for this game. EA really took advantage of the Wii and it has great graphics for the system, it plays really well, and it's just an all round really fun arcade racing game. So if you enjoy really basic but really enjoyable racing games, definitely recommend Need for Speed Nitro. And using the Need for Speed Nitro engine, they actually, I've got them here somewhere, but there was Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, there was Need for Speed The Run, a few of the other Need for Speed games later on actually used this engine, so they're also really fun to play as well, but this is the main one for me personally, because this is a completely unique game, and it's a really good one as well. Now here we have Geometry Wars Galaxies by Bizarre Creations, the creators of my favourite racing game, Metropolis Street Racer for the Dreamcast. Of course, the original Geometry Wars was famous for being an easter egg in Project Gotham Racing 2 on the original Xbox and they took that mini game and turned it into a full-fledged arcade style game with loads of different missions, loads of different levels to explore and the way it's ported to the Wii it plays really well using the pointer to aim and shoot and using the nunchuck to move around. I feel like it was a really good decision for them to control the game in this way and it makes it so fun to play and the graphics of course look amazing as well. I love the ripple effect on the grid and stuff. It's basically the evolution of something like Robotron. So if you enjoy your arcade style shooting games then you definitely need to get Geometry Wars Galaxies. Right, three more games now. I really hope you've enjoyed this video so far. The next one is Blastworks Build, Trade and Destroy. This is a really interesting shoot 'em up for the Wii and along with an amazing single player campaign it also has complete creative modes as well where you can not just build your own ships but you can build entire levels. You can even decide how the bullets work and how they fire and you can set up your entire own game if you wanted to. I used to play this a lot back in college because I was really into the creative sort of games back then and this was one that I played a lot of. It also has a really unique mechanic that I've never really seen replicated in any other shoot 'em up and that's the fact that once you destroy an enemy, once it's been destroyed it falls to the bottom of the screen but you can grab it before it reaches the bottom of the screen and then you can attach it onto your ship and you can do this as many times as you want so by the end of the stage if you haven't got hit you can end up with this huge ship that takes up almost the entire screen and you can be firing bullets out of every direction and it's just a really fun game and a really unique concept so definitely recommend Blastworks and I also think it's really cheap as well so definitely if you enjoy your shooting games and you want something very different and you want something with a lot of editable elements to it definitely go and check out Blastworks you will not be disappointed and now the final two, this one is Bit Trip Complete. And these are basically a series of different mini games all compiled together on one disc. They are really, really fun. My favourite of the bunch on this collection is probably the one called Void, I think it is, where you basically play as a black dot and you have to eat the other black dots. And as you eat these black dots, you start expanding until you're almost the size of the entire screen. And the idea is to try and collect as many as you can and then shrink back down and save all of the points without touching one of the white dots. It's such a simple concept, but it works so well. And that's just one of, I think, six games on this collection, of course. Another really famous one is Bit Trip Runner and that actually got a sequel very recently on the Switch actually with Charles Martinet doing the voiceover. 
So if you enjoy really, really simple 8-bit graphics with a really nice aesthetic, really great music as well, and really addictive gameplay, definitely recommend Bit Trip Complete. And I think this one also got a release on the 3DS back in the day as well, so there's two different ways of playing this. And I think they also came out separately as downloadable titles, but obviously this is the only way you can still get them. Because unfortunately the WiiWare store has been taken offline now, so thankfully they decided to make this physical version here, so people still have a chance of playing them on the system today. And the final game, and definitely the most recent game as well, this is Rodia the Sky Soldier, and a lot of people probably know this as a Wii U game. But actually, if you got the Wii U game at launch, it also came with the Wii game as well, which was Yuji Naka's original vision for the game. Yes, this is another game by Yuji Naka, the same person who made Ivy the Kiwi that we showed off earlier. This one is more like going back to his idea of Nights into Dreams, where you fly around really, really colourful stages, although this one has a lot more of a 3D platforming sort of feel to it, and you also get loads of different power-ups, loads of different weapons, and the Wii version of the game is so much better than the Wii U version of the game. It looks better, it plays better, just everything about it. This was his original vision, and you can tell that they really changed up a lot of what made the game so great when they released it on the Wii U and the 3DS. So if you can track down a copy, definitely recommend Rodeo the Sky Soldier on the Wii. It is by far the best way of playing the game. It has amazing production values for something that didn't even get a release. And honestly, at the time, I was so disappointed by the Wii U game that I didn't even bother playing the Wii version until actually a few years later. And when I did, I was so shocked at just how different and how much better it was. Just take a look at the video now and then compare it to the Wii U version. And I'm sure you can see that the Wii one is so much more fun to play. So I really hope you enjoyed my list of 15 hidden gems for the Wii. I think I might have just got cut off there because I got so carried away talking about all of these amazing games that my camera actually overheated. But I'm back now to wrap this video up. So thank you all so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below what some of your favorite hidden gems are for the system. Over here you can see some hidden gems that people recommended, so go and check all of these games out as well. Thank you all so much for watching, please subscribe, please consider checking out Patreon if you want to see these videos early, as well as get behind the scenes access. I really do appreciate each and every one of you that have gone over there and pledged on Patreon, it does mean the world to me. That's it for now though, so thank you all so much for watching, I'll see you next week for the next episode. Goodbye!